DemocracyNow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté. Well, activists in Detroit have appealed to the U.N. over the city's move to shut off the water of thousands of residents. The Detroit Water Authority says half of its 323,000 accounts are delinquent. It has begun turning off the taps of those who do not pay bills that total above $150 or that are 60 days late. Since March, up to 3,000 account holders have had their taps shut off per week. The Detroit Water Authority carries an estimated $5 billion in debt and has been the subject of talks to privatize. Activists have been organizing against the water shutoffs, saying they target Detroit's most vulnerable families. This is Ann Rawl of the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization. I want to tell you what six kids on this court when they came to shut off the water and their parents had to run to try to find how they're going to pay their water bill. Another woman, she's pregnant, she has a two-year-old. She's holding the bill with for four hundred dollars in her hand, and she's begging the man, "Don't turn off my water." A pregnant woman with a four hundred dollar bill. You're gonna close the water up for a woman with a four hundred dollar bill who's pregnant. That was Anne Rawl of the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization. In a submission to the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Human Right to Safe Drinking Water and Sanitation. Activists say Detroit is trying to push through a private takeover of its water system at the expense of basic rights. The group Food and Water Watch said by denying water service to thousands, Detroit is violating the human right to water. The poverty rate in Detroit is approximately 40 percent, and people have seen their water bills increase by 119 percent within the last decade. Most of the residents are African American. Two thirds of those impacted by the water shutoffs involve families with children. Meanwhile, the the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department, or DWSD, has defended its actions, saying the water shutoffs are necessary for alleviating the department's debts. This is Greg Eno, the public affairs specialist at WSD. We're trying to work with people more aggressively, let's put it that way, to try to get them either on payment plans or to get them paid. And it has worked. It has, um, we've, we've increased our, um, we've lowered our debt a little bit by doing that. For more, we go to Detroit, Michigan, where we're joined by Maureen Taylor, the state chair of the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization. In Ottawa, Canada, we're joined by Mira Karananthan, an international water campaigner for the Blue Planet Project. Her group filed the submission to the U.N. Special Rapporteur regarding regarding the right to drinking water in Detroit. Uh, we invited Detroit's emergency manager, Kevin Orr, to join us on the program, but his office declined our request. Maureen Amira, thanks for joining us. Maureen, tell us what's happening on the ground. People must be scratching their heads around the United States and around the world to hear this. How many people are having their water cut off in Detroit every week? We're getting conflicting information, and good morning to you. Uh, we're told that it's anywhere from 3,000 per month to 3,000 per week. It is historical for the Detroit Water and Sewage Department to not give its residents information. But at our offices at Michigan Welfare Rights, we are getting 30 to 40 calls an hour where people are saying, I either have a water bill and I'm afraid that my water's about to be cut off or my water has already been cut off. What can you do to help us and give us some information? So it, it is scandalous. And we live in the Great Lakes. And to have water threatened, and people told that if your bill is $150 or more, you're on a block, a chopping block, where your water is going to be turned off. In Michigan, it is particularly egregious because a household that has welfare involvement and water is turned off with minor children in a home means that protective services can come in and take the children out and put them in foster care. And in a foster care home, you can earn more money as a foster parent than you can as a birth mother. It's just scandalous what's going on in Detroit, just scandalous. And what can families do if they don't have water? Where do they get clean water? Well, again, we live in the Great Lakes, so it's just—it's an outrage to even have this discussion, that this kind of a attack is going on. What we advise people to do is, first of all, we get information on what is the reason why you may be behind on your water bill. We have multiple agencies and organizations that we can send people to to get partial payments. We try to encourage people to set up payment plans. 
But the, the, the number of people that are under attack, and again, we're talking about uh, blue-collar workers in Detroit. This is an orchestrated attack by banks and corporations and whatnot in an effort to try to enrich themselves. And so, uh, as uh, the Water Department is trying to justify this egregious behavior, we didn't have any choice. But our colleagues in Canada that suggested perhaps we should go to the U.N., we jumped at the opportunity, and we are expecting the United Nations to come to Detroit, take a look at what's going on here, and to make some kind of declarations about human rights violations. It, this is an outrage. Uh, Mira Karnanthan, uh, you're with the Blue Planet Project. Uh, your group authored this report to the U.N. Can you talk about what the, the statement, this appeal, says? The United Nations will look at the facts, look at what's happening um, in Detroit, and join us in declaring this a violation of the human right to water and sanitation. If you listen to the Department of Water and Sewerage in Detroit, you would think this is, you know, this is a case of people not paying for running shoes they purchased. But we're talking about uh, the water and sanitation services the people in Detroit are entitled to. This is their public water um, and sanitation utility. And so uh, the, these, the, the, the level of cutoffs that we're seeing in Detroit um, it's, it's absolutely outrageous. It is a scandal, and it is a, it's a human rights uh, violation. Um, and these are not the measures that should be taken by the city to address the problem of, uh, of underfunding uh, in the, uh, to, to the water and sanitation services. Mira, how um, would, uh, now, we're, we're calling on the U.S. government. We're calling on, on Congress to intervene. We're calling on the state of Michigan to intervene, uh, because both the federal government and the state have um, obligations to ensure that the, the rights of the people in the city of Detroit are...